There's a common misconception that the anti-vivisection movement is a modern one. However, it actually originated in 19th century England, at a time when vivisection was highly debated. Vivisection is a practice of performing operations on live animals for scientific research. The early anti-vivisection movement was led by women, many of whom were also prominent feminists and women's rights activists. At Humane Research Australia, as part of our mission to end animal experimentation, we would like to acknowledge four women who were pioneers of the anti-vivisection movement. Anna Kingsford was an English feminist, vegetarian and anti-vivisection activist. To support her activism work, she studied medicine and became the first woman in Britain to obtain a medical degree. During classes, she protested in resistance whenever vivisection would take place. Often the only woman in her class, she endured further persecution for her animal rights activism and yet still she continued to take a stand. Frances Power Cobb was an Irish writer, social reformer and leader in the women's rights and anti-vivisection movements. She was a feminist activist and member of the London Suffragettes. In 1875, she founded the world's first organisation dedicated to campaigning against vivisection. Today, the organisation continues its work as Cruelty Free International, formerly the British Union for the Abolition of Vivisection. The protests of the early animal rights movement led to the Cruelty to Animals Act of 1876, which Frances Cobb was instrumental in drafting. This was the world's first legislation to regulate the use of live animals in scientific research. Louise Lind Arf Hagerby and Lisa Schartau were two Swedish feminists and animal rights activists who founded the Anti-Vivisection Society of Sweden. To support their campaigning, the women enrolled at the London School of Medicine for Women in 1902, a newly formed vivisection free college that had visitation arrangements with other colleges. Here they infiltrated the male dominated medical fraternity, attending hundreds of lectures to witness experiments on live animals. In 1903, the women witnessed professors dissecting an unanesthetized brown terrier in front of 60 medical students at University College London. This same dog was used in multiple procedures over the course of a few months and soon after the dog was killed. The women recorded these events and published them as the Shambles of Science, Extracts from the Diary of Two Students of Physiology, 1903. Their expose sparked outrage, dividing public opinion and bringing anti-vivisection into the spotlight with a legal case involving the college, a controversial monument built in memory of the brown dog along with rallies and riots of protest. This campaign became known by history as the Brown Dog Affair, a key moment in the anti-vivisection movement. At a time when women did not have the right to vote, were shunned from studying and were expected to be subservient, these women fought hard against oppression and exploitation in all its forms. Without their courage, determination and leadership, the animal welfare movement wouldn't be where it is today. But there is still more work to be done. Although there is a growing shift towards the use of non-animal alternatives in biomedical research, each year there are still millions of animals around the globe that continue to suffer in animal experimentation. Humane Research Australia continues to uphold the work of these early anti-vivisectionists and to this day we stand proudly on their shoulders.